So this is late on your end. Hey, we are back <laughs> with the five day brand creation challenge. How are you doing here this fine day? Uh, if you tuned in uh, yesterday, go ahead and drop a comment below and let us know what was your big takeaway or aha moment from the last session? Yes. Oh, did you have any, any takeaways, Haley? Um, I think having the, I don't know, having the, having the broader subject and then like the, the umbrella subject and then what you want to narrow down to, that was really good. Good. And, uh, until I meet myself, we might have Asher speaking on my end, so, because he hasn't quite gone to sleep yet. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like we got six people in here so far. No. And just as a reminder, um, you have to grant StreamYard access in order for us to see your name in the comments. And uh, Haley will be handling all the comments as well. So I'll be doing the training and then I'll do a Q&A at the end. And then while I'm doing the training, I won't be answering any questions. So if you have a question, save it for the end. And also remember there will be a task for you to complete today. And there's a task for each day of this challenge. So if you didn't do yesterday's task, go ahead and do that because everyone who completes all five days gets entered in the giveaway. Mm -hmm. And that giveaway is for a free year of access for my Adventure Brand Coaching Community membership site, which is helping you take this training and taking it to the next level and the level beyond that and helping you really grow your, your business online, helping you get people to your website, helping you get leads, get sales, and it will be an ongoing support and coaching. And so uh, I, the reason I'm requiring you to complete all five tasks, because these are really going to help you get the foundation of your brand in place. And so I only want to give, you know, this access to this membership site to those people that are actually working on growing their brand. So um, they're pretty simple tasks though. So uh, don't feel overwhelmed. They're, they're pretty easy to do. So um, so stick to the end so you can hear what that is and again complete that task today or just sometime this week um, before Saturday when I will announce the winner of that. Um, all right, so I'm just looking at some of the comments here real quick before we get started. Yeah, so we had... um, if you gave permission yesterday, apparently not because we can see your name, Emily. So great. Uh, we're still getting used to this platform ourselves too, which is <laughs> brand new to us as well. Hey, Myra. Hey, Amanda. All right, here's an aha moment from yesterday. My aha from Amanda. My aha moment from yesterday is that I already was focusing on some of the things you went over for adding value and targeting a specific audience. Well, that's great. That's great if you're already doing some of these things. So you've got a head start there. This is Renee's aha moment. Yeah. Refining yep. the niche. Yep, that's it's really good. Getting really clear good on that is, one. yeah, it's really important for the, the foundation of your business. All right, and also how many factors there are that just go into a brand. Yeah, it's, I'm kind of really, really breaking things down, trying to make it overly, um, kind of really trying to break things down probably you know a bit, it's probably a little bit of an overkill so I don't want to be like overwhelming you with all the different factors that go into a brand because um, at the end of the day it's just a brand is just you know what people think and feel when they think about you so um, all the stuff that we're talking about is just how to be intentional and get people to think and feel the things you want them to for their benefit so they know that you're someone that's there to help them and you can help you stand out from all the noise. All right. Well, with all that being said, I will dive into the training now. Let's share my screen. Oh, I've got, yeah. Okay. There we go. Share my screen. All right. Day two. All right. I remove these banners. All 
All right, so here we are, day two, and we're talking about understanding your customer avatar and how you can help them. And if you don't know what a customer avatar is, don't worry, it's really simple. Um, I'll be covering that in this training. And so the whole point of this is you really can't start a business and hope to make any sales if you don't really understand who your ideal customer is, who is the person that's most likely to want to buy from you. And this is a step that most network marketing trainers skip and it's not really something that's taught by most companies. They just say that everyone's your customer and you know everyone with a pulse or within three feet of you, you should prospect them or they could be a potential customer. And you know the list goes on and on with all the slogans and sayings that companies come up with to try and get people to just reach out to more people. And the problem with that is most people are not your perfect prospect. Most people aren't going to be interested in what you're offering. And even the people that sometimes need your product the most aren't going to be the most likely to buy from you. And sure, you can keep hitting them over the head and working at trying to get them to buy from you, but if they're not interested, it's just not gonna happen. You're, you're wasting your time and it's gonna make you feel bad. It's gonna make you feel pushy. It's gonna make you feel sa salesy. And that's not what we're about. So instead, the path of least resistance is just to find the people that are already predisposed to be interested in your product, in your brand, in what it is you're talking about. Find where those people are at online and then attract them to you. And we're gonna talk more about that, but it, attracting them to you basically comes down to putting out content that they resonate with, that helps solve their problems or moves them closer to their desires. And that's um, tomorrow and Thursday, we'll talk more about that. So right now is just getting clear on who your ideal customer is and just getting back to the idea of it being so important who you know that you find the ideal person and this isn't even necessarily the people that need it the most right so um, maybe if you're in a health and wellness company you think the people that need it the most are the people that you know maybe like need to lose weight or need to get healthy um, but maybe the reason they are that way is because they're not interested in health products. So those might not be the people that you actually want to target. And um, a quick story of this is in, when I was in college, I was running a um, painting business where I was basically selling house painting jobs. Uh, and I would go door to door and I would come up to a house that like has really bad, like all the paints peeling off. You can see wood exposed which um, you know can be dangerous for the house because it's exposed to the elements, it can rot. And I would think, oh great, here's someone that really needs their house painted. This is going to be the person that signs up for painting a painting job. And these are you know expensive um, jobs, usually around two thousand dollars for the whole thing. And um, so I go to the door, and they would usually be the most hostile or least least likely to be interested. And none of them ever said that they they none of them ever signed up. And I was just offering free estimates. None of them even accepted a free estimate. So that's crazy. And then I would go to people that whose houses looked fine. And those would be the people that actually would sign up because their house probably looks nice because they're interested in taking care of it. And I was offering a service that would continue that goal. So that's just something to keep in mind and why your customer avatar is so important. So goals by the end of today you'll understand who your customer avatar is and how you can help them and you'll also have a brand name and website created hopefully so those are the goals so again this is the foundation to understanding who your brand is serving so yesterday we kind of talked about kind of the broad umbrella category of what your business would fit into and then i encouraged you to kind of narrow that down and figure out what your niche is going to be and so um, it's really cool seeing what everyone uh, answered there and put in for the, what their niche was. And so today is just continuing along that line and narrowing down even further into figuring out, you know, who your target audience is. And from there, who your customer avatar is. So this is kind of what we're talking about if all these kind of terms are confusing. So you've kind of found your big topic, your niche. So maybe that was parenting or maybe that was growing an online business or um, health and wellness or hair care or something like that but now you you're going to want to narrow down and figure out who your target audience is and this comes even before your avatar so like i said we've covered category and niche now today we're working on target audience and customer avatar 
So target audience, what is a target audience? So target audience is a particular group or demographic at which your marketing is aimed. So, so maybe you have your, your niche that is parenting, but you want to narrow down even further and what, what kind of parents are you interested in talking about? Or maybe um, your broader niche is weight loss, but what kind of demographic within weight loss are you targeting? Is it like busy moms? Is it men? Is it younger people, older people? So this is where your target audience comes in. It's, it's, you're getting more specific on who it is you want to help and this helps give you a guide for what kinds of content you're going to create to help them and attract them to your brand. So you can hear here you can see some examples of what target audience would be like busy moms. Um, for me, my brand, it's indie DIY music artists. Maybe you're talking entrepreneurs or people who love to travel. So that's kind of helping you narrow down who your target audience is. And this is really what you need to get started with your business. You don't actually need a custom a customer avatar to have success. A customer avatar, which we'll talk about in a second, um, it just helps you better relate to the, your audience. All right, so um, go ahead and drop a comment um, if this is making sense. Just type a yes if it's making sense. Um, and if not, and you have a question, then write that down so I can address it at the end. All right, so customer avatar. So customer avatar is a profile of one person real or imagined, that accurately represents your target audience as a whole, right? So you got your, your target audience now, some kind of demographic, and now you're, you're plucking one person out of there that represents that audience as a whole, and you're really building out a profile of them that makes them feel like a real person because all these marketing terms like niche and target audience that can seem very impersonal, and it's hard to really relate to the pains and struggles and desires of the people you're trying to help. So by having a customer avatar, it really helps you connect with them better. It helps you get into the minds and hearts of your target audience. And so all of your marketing should then be, be designed to speak and appeal to this one customer avatar. And so that's another important thing to keep in mind when you're marketing and anything you put out, like whether it's a social media post or an email or a video, that's all marketing. And so whenever you put something out, you want to be addressing that customer avatar in your email, in your video, in your social media post, meaning you're talking to one person. So you don't want to say like you guys or um, all of you or anything, anything plural, because at any one time when, when you're at, when people are watching your content or viewing your content, they're viewing it as one singular person. And when you mention as a group, there is a disconnect there. You're distancing yourself from them a little bit. But if you're talking like you're talking to one person, that creates more of a connection. It removes the barriers. Um, and so it helps them build that relationship and that know, like, and trust factor with you, especially if you really understand them and you're really speaking to their pains and their problems. So that's where having a customer avatar can be very uh, powerful and help you grow your business. So it's basically the concept of being a big fish in a small pond. That's why you need to niche down because if you try to be too broad, you're not going to stand out. So again, the health and wellness example is a common one because there's just so many network marketing companies there. And so there's a lot of you know different topics you could target in health and wellness. It could be you know mental health or spiritual health um, or fitness or it could be in this example, I'm giving weight loss. And then there's, of course, there's a lot of ways to do that. So maybe you're going to focus on without exercise, meaning how you eat, diet, those sorts of things. Um, and then you're getting down into your target audience, which is, say, busy homeschooling moms. And so this helps you actually stand out. You'll see results faster and you're more likely to succeed. So example, um, in this kind of vein, which isn't actually a network marketing company, but just something that popped into my head was Trim Healthy Mama. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this brand, but they're a health and wellness brand and they're focusing on weight loss. Obviously, you can that's in the brand name, right? Trim Healthy. And even their their uh, target audience is in the name as well. And they're uh, the extra step here. They're also focusing on without exercise because it's a, a diet system. And they're targeting moms. Obviously, that's in the name too. So this is why it's, um, we talked about this yesterday. There was a question about, should you figure out, um, your brand identity and 
your avatar and all that stuff in your uh, domain name for your website? Should you figure all that out before getting your website? And yes, because here, if they hadn't known all this first, they wouldn't have known um, to get the, the brand name Trim Healthy Mama. So that's really good job by them because you can they immediately their customer avatar is going to recognize that title and realize they're talking about them like oh I want to get trim I want to get healthy and I'm a mom and so that's why um, I thought this was a good example to kind of point out for how you go about branding yourself whoops Went a little too far so um, I think I, did I have an earlier slide. I think I have another slide later um, that talks about how to figure out who your customer avatar is. Um, but before I get to that, I guess, uh, I'll talk about the avatar matrix. This is what I call the avatar matrix, which uh, it helps you figure out how you can help your customer avatar with your business. Right, so this is how your brand is going to, to exist. It exists, exists to help your customer avatar, but you can only know that if you know what their pains and desires are. And so maybe you, big question you have is what do I talk about? It's a question I get a lot is, well, what do I talk about? Or I don't feel like I have anything valuable to say. Well, this will solve that once and for all. You'll never wonder what to create uh, for content ever again. And so that's by filling out the avatar matrix. And so what you want to do is you'll want to create three con columns just like this. Um, one with the pains of your audience, uh, the middle one with the, the desires of your audience, and then the third one with lingo or language that only maybe people in your audience would recognize, right? Um, so for example, I'm going to use an example I think everyone should be familiar with, which is network marketers. And this is kind of what we use to create content for our Paula Ram brand, the gentle marketing brand. Um, and so here are a list of just some, yeah, not even exhaustive, but some of the problems that network marketers deal with. So lack of time, time management, confusion or lack of clarity, balancing family and business, um, technology, not having enough money to invest, um, not making sales, not getting team members. They're struggling to be consistent. They're not getting leads. They can't keep customers or feel overwhelmed. They don't like doing Facebook Lives. Uh, they don't like prospecting or home parties. They struggle with getting rejected by people. They don't have a supportive spouse. Or their upline is unsupportive. Um, downline attrition. They can't get people to stick around or duplicate. They don't like bugging friends and family and or they've been accused of being in a pyramid scheme. They lack belief or motiva motivation. They don't like doing trade shows, leaving family, awkward situation, three way calls, etc. So um, you can probably type in the chat too, like what are some of your struggles and pains as a network marketer? I'm sure you're very familiar with those yourself because you are a network marketer, most likely if you're in this group. I know we have some people that are not. Um, but you want to create this list for your avatar too. What are their pains? Because these are the things that your brand is going to exist to help them with. Um, and so it's just anything that they have a struggle with or a pain and they want solved. And then and the, once you get that done, you'll move to the middle column and you'll fill out the desires. What do they want? And so for network marketers, they want to be able to get stuff done and get consistent sales, residual income, have a team full of go-getters that duplicates, have a clarity of how to market and grow their business. And they want to do so in a non-salesy way that doesn't involve you know, being pushy. They want to have time freedom or be able to fire their boss and bring their spouse home. They want to be able to go on vacations. They want to get out of debt, rank, rank advance, or pay for their kids' education, travel more, retire early, uh, prove the naysayers wrong, and so on and so forth. You can kind of see there. I mean, if you're getting excited, you get a little bit excited about, you know, just hearing this list, that's probably because you're a network marketer and these are some of your desires. And so when you go to create content, an easy formula is just how to get blank without blank. And the first blank, how to get something they want, right? So you just fill in the blank, one of these desires, and then the second blank without, you put in a pain point. So you could say, um, how to get more sales without rejection or how to get your team to duplicate without 
and lack with even if you don't have a lot of time or something like that you get, obviously you want to kind of think about a little bit more than that and make sure it's congruent but this once you get this filled out you can really better understand who it is you're talking to and create that content that helps and serves them and the final column is lingo so this is you know terms you might want to use so again your avatar recognizes that your brand is talking about them so these are some terms right the only network marketers would understand um, you know duplication lines t uh, three foot rule parties recruits comp plan so this is things you can also put into your title so they immediately say oh this is for network marketers and then also for SEO purposes so search engine optimization if you're creating blog posts um, people are searching on these terms that maybe other people like if for example we're serving network marketers um, and that's within the huge niche of you know building an online business online business and general entrepreneurship so we've niched down into network marketers and these are terms that those other brands wouldn't be using so it helps us stand out and of course there's there going to be other people in our space too um, that we're kind of sharing the, the, the space with I'm sure you know some other network marketing trainers that are creating content online um, that's where having your brand identity and your focus and a lot of other stuff comes in to stand out but anyway this is the avatar matrix so hopefully this makes sense to you I know this really kind of blew my mind when I first was taught this and how it really makes it so much easier to create content come up with headlines for your posts or your videos and just know what to talk about and create content that helps them and so if you do this for for your avatar and um, you don't have to know the answers to all their pains either you can just figure out what their pains are and then you can go and do the research for them go do the homework go figure out what is a solution and then once you find that answer you can then teach it to your audience so in that way you're kind of like being a tour guide so even if you feel like you're not an expert and um, you don't know what you would say once you are clear on what the pains and the desires of your audience are you can go and find the solutions to those and then point your audience to those answers all right so hopefully that was beneficial for you and like I said I have the free worksheet for discovering your avatar um, the avatar discovery worksheet and this walks you through the process of discovering your avatar and you can get this by going to paularan.com slash avatar it might look a little bit different um, than what you see here um, because I was in the, in the process of redoing this um, updating this but um, for my adventure brand Academy um, brand but you it's totally the same that you can get it at polaram.com slash avatar all right so you got that and so now we want to focus now your brand on how do you then attract that avatar to you how do you create a brand that is attractive to your avatar and so this is also very helpful just for you in your mind knowing what it is that you're going to do to help your avatar so what you want to do is you want to create your value proposition because this is going to shape the entire image and focus for your brand and so your your value proposition is just a simple sentence that goes like this I am a blank who helps blank do or achieve blank so that they blank and so to, you just go and you fill in these blanks so I am a and you put in whatever you want to think of yourself as so you're a blogger or you're a youtuber you're a trainer you're a coach whatever you want to classify yourself as and then who helps blank that's where you put in your target audience so busy moms or couples who love to travel or whatever your target audience is well, then do or achieve that's the outcome you want to help them achieve so you might say have help busy moms feel less overwhelmed or have more time and then why what's the ultimate goal of that so that they can have more peace and joy in their lives or enjoy or have spend more time with their families or whatever what's the ultimate goal that people want to want to achieve so right so if you're say helping other entrepreneurs you could say I'm a coach who helps um, mom entrepreneurs do or achieve so you could say grow their business from home so that they can have more time with their kids so right so you got to really kind of drill down deep here with the so that they section of it because for example 
if people say they want to make money, that's not, you know, money is just a means to an end. So what is the deeper thing there? So that's what you want to drill down into with your value proposition. So then for me, for my uh, audio business, so my value proposition is that I am a blogger who helps independent music producers and artists create professional quality music and sell their art online so that they can live their dream and create for a living. So now this value proposition, you can put it on your website, but you don't have to. This is more so for you so that you understand how your brand is going to help your audience. This helps you get very focused. So now you know what your mission is. You know what your, your calling is. This is what you're supposed to do with your brand. So that's the, the value of the value proposition. And then from that, you can then create the tagline that will go on your website. So you have the title of your website, and then you can have that great catchy headline so that when people visit your website, they immediately know, hey, this is for them. And so you want your tagline to be catchy and to the point. Uh, you want it to be a headline or a tagline that your avatar can easily recognize and understand that it's for them. So that's where maybe some of that lingo from the avatar matrix might come in. So they'll see it right away and say, oh, this is for me. Because uh, websites need to pass something that's called the five second rule or three second rule. I can't remember what it is. But what that means is when people visit your website, they need to know within three or five seconds what your website is about and if it is for them. Because if they don't know within that amount of time, they're going to leave. So even if your website is perfectly suited to help your avatar, people aren't going to stick around long enough to know that if you don't have clear branding and a clear tagline that, that communicates that. So you'll want to also clearly convey the benefit that you offer. So you don't want just your uh, your people that are visiting your site to know that it's for them, but you want them to know how you'll help them, how you're going to help them achieve their desires. So for me, my tagline is, and I'm sure I can make a better one, um, but it's make better music, build your fan base. So it's kind of short and catchy. It's clear. I'm helping people make better music. Music artists are going to know about that. And then build your fan base. That's another clear desire they want. And fan base, that's a lingo. It's a term that music artists are familiar with. Um, right? Entrepreneurs, you might you might say build your audience, right? Or social media person, if someone's just wanting to become a social media influencer, you might say grow your followers or something. But for music artists, the lingo is fan base. So that's why I say make better music, build your fan base. I originally had build your tribe. Um, but that's not a term that music artists are going to be familiar with. So I switched it to fan base. So you can kind of see how you should be thinking about your tagline. It doesn't have to be like two separate sentences like this, um, but you want it to be short and clearly, again, be, kept, be to the point, have your avatar recognize why your website is for them and clearly convey the benefit that you offer. All right. And so once you have this, you have, you understand who your avatar is. You have your value proposition, you have your, your mission now, you know how you're supposed to help your avatar and you have the catchy brand name or a catchy tagline. It's then time to decide on what the actual name of your brand will be. And this is something that people agonize over for a long period of time. And I'm here to tell you, you don't need to do that. This is not something you should spend a whole lot of time with. So, but with that in mind, you do wanna create a brand name that your avatar will identify with um, so they can clearly, clear, again clearly know that it's for them and this is um, not a hard and fast rule because there's there are other brands out there that it's not so clear from the name or from the URL what it's about um, but as long as they're getting to your website and they see that it's for them that's the most important part but it can definitely help if you have that in the URL or the name of your brand so for me my uh, brand name is Orpheus Audio Academy so audio makes it clear that it's for something to do with music or, or audio and um, academy means that they're going to be learning something and then i threw orpheus in there because that's a character from greek mythology who was um, like the greatest musician um, ever and so um, i also want to use put that in there to kind of help my brand stand out be a little bit different um, maybe be for those people that are a little bit more nerdy maybe a little bit more into mythology or history because that's what I relate to and I want to attract people that are kind of like me because I can best help people that are similar to me. Um, but you don't have to create a brand name like that. You can just use your name. So we have PaulaRam.com. That's a lot of what a lot of people do, um, especially in the network marketing 
area. So maybe depending on the whatever niche you're in, you might want to keep that in mind too. Maybe create a list of maybe 10 or 20 other influencers in that niche and see what their brand names are and kind of use that as a guide. Um, or maybe you could even use your name with a modifier. So you might say health with Susan or whatever your name is or success with Terry or Emily's Joy because I saw Emily Haggerty um, did that for her website. So um, these are kind of the kind of the three, I guess, templates you could say for creating a brand name. So you can either create some kind of um, name that has nothing to do with you. It is something that's just related to your niche or your industry or something your avatar recognize. Um, or you can use your name or your name with a modifier. And so one thing that's beneficial about using your personal name is that really helps people, again, connect with you because they see that you're a real person, you're a real face. Whereas if you're using a less personal brand name, um, that, again, creates a little bit of a barrier there because people connect with people and not companies. But obviously, that's a small thing. So it can work either way. So um, it's up to you for what you want to do. And it also depends on how personal of a brand it's going to be. Are you planning on creating all the content yourself? Or are you going to have other writers? Or are you planning on selling it one day? That would also depend on what kind of name you want to have. But that's kind of really far future um, if you're thinking that far ahead. All right. And then you'll want to create a logo. And I highly suggest you get a professional one designed. Um, I didn't always recommend this, but I do kind of recommend this now because a prof professional logo helps you stand out and lends trust and authority to your brand. So so many websites out there now, it's, it's really an easy way to help yourself kind of stand out by having that professional logo. And it doesn't have to be that expensive to get, but it helps communicate that you're serious and you're not an amateur. So you're sticking around, you're, you care about your website, you care about your brand, you care about the content you're putting out there. And um, you can use services like Fiverr or 99designs to get your logo designed. I use 99designs to get this logo for my Orpheus Audio Academy brand. I think it's pretty nice looking. So that's kind of the last thing you want to do. This isn't as vital. Um, you can start out with just a logo you created yourself. Um, so you can see in the bottom right, I have a Venture Brand Academy a logo that I just created myself. So that's not, not very professional or nice looking, but it does well in a pinch. And so that's something you, you, don't, you don't have to start out with having a great logo because no one's going to really see you at first. It takes a while to create content and get traffic to your website, but then definitely think about getting a professional logo down the road. All right. So now that you know who your avatar is, you have your value proposition, your tagline, and you know what your actual brand name will be. It's time to actually set up your website and build your website. Go um, get that domain name, go get a Bluehost account and or other service or other hosting provider and create your website because this will be your home base for your brand. And it shows that, again, that you're a professional, right? All professionals have websites and it's digital real estate that you actually own and control unlike social media. Now you, you might think, oh, I'm creating a brand. I'm gonna go create a Facebook page or I'm gonna cr go create an Instagram account. The problem with that is you don't actually own or control those platforms. You don't actually own or control your audience there. So first off, it's just a reality that all these platforms are more and more so becoming pay to play. That means they're not going to really show your content to anyone in your audience unless you pay for ads. So they're really limiting your reach and how many people actually see your posts right off the bat right there. The other thing is um, they're getting more and more authoritarian and uh, there's a whole lot more censorship going on now. And even if you think you're following all the rules, you can get stuff banned or removed. Uh, and it's just, social media is just a very uncertain place to be. And platforms also just come and go as far as popularity goes. And you don't want to just lose your audience overnight. So, but by having your own website, that's something you own and control and you're not going to have that taken away from you because you own it. So you definitely want to have your own website and then think of social media platforms or forums or other places online as simply marketplaces where you then are tapping into to draw people back to your website. So your website is kind of like your home base. And it's, it's also where you're going to be posting your content. So if you're creating 
blog posts or podcasts or videos, you want to then post them back on your website because that's where people can go for your hub where they can find all your content. And then um, I have a whole course that kind of walks you through how to create a website really quickly and that's called Brand Creation Blueprint. So if you haven't already uh, signed up for that, then definitely go to polaram.com slash BCB and that will walk you through how to actually create your website, how to get your hosting provider, how to get your domain name. And if you don't understand all these terms, it's the, this course explains all that. And also just walks you through all the nitty gritty details of setting up your website more so than this training will do. And again, that course is completely free and you can get that at polaram.com slash BCB. So um, now that you know all this stuff, it's time to go create your website. All right, so challenge for today. I thought about making the challenge for today to go create your website, but I know there's um, some financial decisions that have to be made there because you have to pay for hosting and things like that. And I don't want to require people to do that. So I decided to make the challenge for today to simply create your value proposition, and then you'll share that value proposition in a post in this group that I'll put up after this stream is over. Um, and again, I'll tag that with, I think it, what did I use yesterday? I think it was like daily brand challenge. So look for that hashtag and then put in your value proposition there after you create that today. And again, everyone who completes all five days of challenges gets entered into a giveaway to earn one free year of membership to my adventure brand coaching community, which will give you weekly training and coaching on how to grow your website and brand. So if you've felt like you've needed more accountability or you just need more advanced strategies on how to actually get people to your website, how to set up automations to um, generate automatic income uh, and do so passively from home, uh, then this is definitely a community for you and you can get free year of access to that um, by completing all these challenges and being entered in a giveaway. So definitely do that and with that, I guess we will move to the Q and A. All right. We have a couple of questions. We'll start with Kathy's. Um, do you have a referral link for Bluehost? Oh, thank you for mentioning that we do. Um, I believe it's just paularam.com slash Bluehost. So yes, that's our affiliate link. So if you use our affiliate link, we'll make a small commission at no extra cost to you. And we would greatly appreciate that. So I'll actually just put that. Yes. All right. That should be it. Let me test it. Maybe me too. <laughs> All right. So then... I hope that works. Let's see. I think Emily's question has to do with the daily challenge about the value proposition. Yes. Yeah. The value proposition is the fill in the blank statement and I'll include that in the post as well. So it's, I am a blank who helps blank um, achieve or do blank so that they blank. So those four, those four blanks in that statement is your value proposition. So while we're waiting for more questions, I did want to say that as you're going through this and completing the challenges and building your brand, don't let the tendency to perfect every single detail stop you from moving right. forward with building your website and building your brand. Because yeah, don't overthink, don't overthink this because yeah. your brand's going to change and evolve over time as you go anyway. So marketing is all about testing. It's, mm -hmm. it's all about seeing what, what works can, and don't just like randomly change things. We, you know, give it some time to see if it works, but then if it's not working, just tweak it a little and see if it works. All right. So here is Myra's question. Is it a good time to ask an opinion about my brand name? Yeah, go ahead. Renee, this is Renee's question. So you need a website along with the MLM one for you. 
how do you direct them to it to purchase? Um, so I'm, I think you're, you're saying, do you need a website on top of your replicated website for your MLM company? And the answer is yes, if you're building your own brand, because um, the, comp the website that your, that your MLM has, that is their brand, that's not your brand. You're wanting to build a bigger brand that can encompass your MLM company or, or even more than that, if you wanna sell other things or cover other topics. And so that's what we talked about in yesterday's video. Um, but as far as how do you get them to purchase? Um, so what we have on our website is we create content. So, um, we might create content on like different hairstyling tips or different tips on how to have healthy hair, um, or why you should have, I think our latest one was like, why you should let your hair go gray. And so these are all content around helping our avatar, which is, you know, related to hair and simplicity and, um, just having a healthy, joyful life. And then so this content is what we put out there on our blog so people can find it from Google or they can find it on Pinterest or other places. And then once they find those articles, in those articles, we recommend, hey, use the, the, the particular product that we have. So the, the Flexi Clip or the Hair Sticks or different products that our MLM company has, we recommend them to then get those to help with those particular pain points that we're solving. So if you think back to the avatar matrix, right? So we're creating content that solves those pain points and then our MLM product is just one more solution to one of those pains. And so that's how we then direct them to the website. Say, hey, click here to go buy that. Or we'll, we'll get them on our email list and we can then follow up with them. We give them hairstyling tutorials and then in those tutorials we recommend products. So that's how you get them to your replicated website. And this is kind of like an extra step and why it's important is if you skip this step and you just try to send people straight to your website, like a lot of people do, they'll just post their website on social media over and over, or um, just kind of try to spam everyone with their website. Um, number one, a lot of MLM websites aren't designed very well. They're not really designed for conversions in mind. So they're kind of confusing, hard to navigate, and it's not clear what's going on. And number two, a lot of network marketing products are very unique and they require some education. They're not just like, oh, let me go to the store and I'll just buy a paper towels I don't it doesn't I don't really care what brand they are it's paper towels everyone knows what paper towels are but with MLM products it's they're unique they're very different they require education and so that's where you come in and so you you lead with value you lead with uh, creating content and that's kind of the third benefit of this is the law of reciprocity that means you're giving something away for free this valuable information this valuable training that's helping build this relationship and now they're now willing to check out this product where if you just led with, hey, check out my product, buy my product, people are gonna be kind of put up walls against that. So this is different, you're leading with value. And this is also a value that people can find on the internet and be attracted to you, that people that didn't know you before and they're seeing this great content and they're like, oh wow, this is really valuable. And then they see, hey, there's a product that can help do X, Y, Z, let me go click on that. It goes to the website now and you've already kind of framed it, you've already kind of explained what it is a little bit. And so now they're more likely to buy it when they get to your website. So hopefully it's kind of a little bit long-winded because it kind of is the whole concept that we're talking about here for building an online brand, why you want to have it. And so hopefully that makes sense and that clarifies that. All right, Emily says the brand creation blueprint is awesome. Very easy to follow and takes you through step through each step. Oh, great. That's good to hear. I'm really, really happy to hear that. So it's good to get that feedback to know that that's helpful. All right, we got another question. All right, so yeah, Stephanie help. says, what are your thoughts on starting this? On starting this, setting it all up and waiting to share the domain URL, domain until I get enough content that I am happy with. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a, kind of up to you if you want to do kind of a soft launch or do you want to do a, a big launch? Um, so something um, that we do, and I was probably, I was planning on talking about this in my uh, membership site, but you can just get your website all set up and then just publish it and then just start regularly putting out content. Um, that's that's fine way to go about starting things because um, in the beginning, you're not gonna have an audience, right? Most likely people aren't gonna know who you are and it takes a while for things to get ranked in Google or YouTube or wherever you're creating your content and for people to find you. So you don't really need a lot of content when you start out, you can just publish it and then find a regular publishing uh, routine and start publishing content. Now, if you wanna really do a launch and kind of jumpstart things, um, you can do that as well. And what we did for 
a couple of our brands for um, the Paula Rand brand and for Kingdom Pen, which I mentioned uh, I'm a part of in um, yesterday's video, is we did a roundup post. So we, we published with three pieces of content. That's kind of like a good rule of thumb is three pieces of content. So we had two regular pieces of content, kind of giving a picture of the types of content that we're going to regularly publish. And then we created what's called a roundup post. And what that is, is you go around to all the different influencers in your niche that also serves your target audience. And you'll ask them one very specific question that most people in your audience is going to have one specific struggle. And then you ask them to answer that question. So um, that's what we did when we launched our, our Paula Ram brand. So we, um, so we have, I think I can, I can show the article, but we know we got Ray Higdon to respond. We got Simon Chan, um, Fernie Ceballos, different, a whole bunch of different trainers that are in the network marketing space to answer the question, like, what would you do if you were starting your network marketing business from scratch today? And so we got them all to answer that singular question. And then once we published that blog post, we then went back to those people and asked them if they would share it with their audience. And not everyone shared it, but some did share it. And so that really helped jumpstart our, our business there and get us a, a bunch of growth on our email list right away because all these big brands are, sh are sharing this piece of content and they're motivated to share it because they're also getting exposure to all these other brands. So it's all, all these different lead, you know, trainers are all helping each other out by being a part of this um, roundup post. So, um, that's a really th big thing that I recommend. And you don't just have to do this when you're launching. You can do this, you know, throughout the year. It just takes a lot of work because you have to reach out to so many people because you're only going to get like maybe 10% of people to respond and actually answer. So you have to reach out to a ton of people. And it can be intimidating to reach out to people who are like leaders in your um, category, but it's definitely worth it. Um, and a lot of times the people that you don't think will respond actually respond. And that's, that's always the exciting thing. <laughs> right. And, but also, yeah, the sooner I wouldn't, but I don't want you to try and feel like everything has to be perfect before starting and you just put it off and put it off because the sooner you got start getting content out there, the sooner you can start um, growing an audience, even if the content isn't perfect, because you never know what might happen, what might, you know, hit, hit it off. So I would say just start putting out content out there as soon as possible and um, you'll just grow and improve over time. And then maybe, maybe you give yourself, you know, a couple of weeks or something to put together a roundup post and you'll be with that if you're, if you're um, interested in doing that. All right. Neela has a question. All right. So you mentioned help setting up the website. Is that generic or for a specific domain. I'm not sure if I quite understand what you're asking. Um, I have a free course that walks you through how to set up your website and that involves purchasing a domain name for your brand. So yeah, you will need to create your, your uh, brand name and you'll want to use that as your domain. So your, do so your brand name, so for example, my brand name is Orpheus Audio Academy for my music brand. And then my domain, uh, my domain is the actual URL. So that is orpheusaudioacademy.com or you could have like .org or something else. We have kingdompen.org is the, the URL for that, but the brand name is Kingdom Pen. So I don't know if that answers your question or not, or if that makes sense. All right, and then here is Myra's. All right, so I've considered using Everyday Beautiful with Myra for a long time now. My hesitation has been that I'm not sure if that conveys what my brand would be about. My idea is to convey that you can make even normal days beautiful. I plan to target women who want to build a business from home and build the life they want, home with kids, their own schedule, no boss. I also want to encourage optimism, thankfulness, kindness, and I'm hoping to tie that in with our hair accessories too. Um, I don't know if there's more that got cut off. Um, so yeah, um, so everyday beautiful, you might think that's more of maybe a beauty blog or a fashion or something. Um, but that said, I think, I think what you have here is pretty good too. And like I, I mentioned, the actual 
URL or brand name isn't as key as having um, that tagline. And then when people visit it, they know right away what it is they're looking at and that's for them. So I would make it very clear when they get there that it's for business owners, it's for entrepreneurs, um, especially if you have that name. But I think that's okay having that name because that's your bigger that's your bigger mission. That's your bigger purpose. Your bigger purpose isn't really entrepreneurship. That's not really business. It's not really making money. It's those other things you mentioned. It's being home with the kids, having your own schedule, no boss. And then entrepreneurship and growing your own business, that's just a means to that end. So I think that's fine having that name. And um, But then, if, yeah, if most of your content is going to be about that and your avatar is, you know, most people don't even think that deep. They're they're just focused on their immediate now, what their pains are now. So my pain is um, I need more customers or I need more leads or something. So as so long as you make that clear um, when they get to your website, that that's what you're going to help them with um, in order to achieve those those, those bigger ends. Um, and then maybe once they're in your community, you can then help them think bigger, help, you know, or create other content around those, those lines. Um, I think that would work. So hopefully that makes makes sense and answers your question. Yeah, the rest of her comment was, and I'm hoping to tie that in with our hair accessories too, everyday style into beautiful hair. Does that make sense? That was the rest of her comment. Yeah, I mean, if you're, yeah, if your main focus is entrepreneurs and, you know, who don't have a lot of time, then I, you can, or maybe they're doing videos and they want to look nice in their videos quickly, then you could definitely incorporate hair products into that, um, especially if it helps, you know, helps them get ready in the morning quickly and, and um, feel put together for the day. Then Mila also said, uh, not domain, web server. Um, so like the hosting provider, um, what was her rest of her question? Yeah, so, um, so yeah, you can use different hosting providers. So we use Bluehost, that's the one we recommend. And I talk about in the brand creation blueprint course why we recommend it. Um, so that's what we use for all of our businesses: Kingdom Pen, Polaram.com, Orpheus Audio Academy, um, a bunch of other. I think we have a bunch of other ones. So we we use Bluehost. So kind of the way that course kind of explains all these terms and how they all work together. But kind of the way I explain it is um, the web server, um, your hosting provider. So like Bluehost, another one's called like SiteGround. Well, we used to have HostGator, but we moved away from that. Um, that's the actual like computers where um, your your code for your website is located. So you could host yourself. You could have your own like computer or laptop um, where you actually have your website exist, the code. Um, but there's a whole bunch of reasons not to do that. Um, not to mention you have to be really techy. So it's better to just hire a company to then do that for you. And then your domain is just kind of the address, kind of the address for a house. So if the hosting is kind of like the house itself, the domain is in the address that people can then find you at. So does that answer your question that you're asking? So Kathy had a, a pretty, I think it's a pretty good suggestion for Myra. Yeah, that, I mean, that could be more of a tagline, uh, although it's not very specific to how it's helping the audience, because uh, that would be kind of a long uh, brand name, especially if it has a URL, find the beauty in everyday.com. I mean, I guess you could get, you could work with that, but it's just a little bit long and shorter and catchier. You can be the easier it is to remember, the easier it is for people to type in, the easier it is to say, because you don't have to repeat it over and over. Um, that could be a slogan that you use. It could be a tagline that you use somewhere. You can have multiple, you know, kind of taglines and slogans that help communicate your brand. Um, but then as far as like the main like slogan or tagline on your website, it'd be, it'd be good if it could um, convey the clear benefit that you're offering. So like we say, um, I believe ours is like grow your business without leaving home. And so we're talking because a lot of people in our audience are still doing vendor events or home parties and things like that so we're saying hey we can help you get a clear benefit grow your business without the pain point leaving home and we've talked about updating ours too we could probably update our our tagline and improve it um so hopefully that is kind of help helps provide some more clarity on the the tagline versus 
brand name. It definitely takes takes some thought. All right. All right. So Emily says I did a soft launch because I wanted to get my name out there and start getting into search engine results. Yep, that's great. Yeah, I, I did that with Orpheus Audio Academy. I still haven't really told anyone about it actually. Um, we even have like an email list of our music fans or who are fans of our band, and I still haven't even told them. And I've just been kind of letting it grow through search engines, and um, that's totally a fine way to do it. Um, then I keep adding lead magnets in content. I don't even have a shop yet. Things are changing every couple of weeks while I'm learning how to market. It'll change again after this training. Yep, that's, that's the whole, that's why I call it adventure. That's why I call it an adventure brand because um, adventures aren't a straight line, right? And Lord of the Rings, you know, the Fellowship of the Ring, they just draw a straight line from the Shire to Mordor and walk in a straight line. Um, they had to meander, they had to adjust. And so, I don't know if there's any Lord of the Rings fans out there, but um, <laughs> that's the same thing with your brand. You're going, It's an adventure. You're going to have to make adjustments. You're going to have to change, and it's fun. It's exciting. And um, you're going to, you know, continue to learn. But none of that happens if you don't actually implement. You actually got to put things into place that you can learn and learn the things that you don't know that you don't know yet. And um, that's great. I think that's great, Emily, that, you've, that you're doing that. And yeah, you don't need a shop yet, especially, you know, there's so many things that can distract you. And right now the main thing is just to create content and grow that audience. And there's really not a point to create a shop because if you don't have an audience yet, because there's no one there to buy yet. And um, if you have a network marketing company, that's kind of your shop right there is you grow an audience and then your network products are that products that your company has. All right, any other questions? Even though he said great analogy. Good, Glad that was helpful. So yeah, I'm um, at three o'clock today in the group. I'm uploading if it's, well, I don't know if it's gonna work actually. I tried to upload it, but I was having trouble. Uh, I was gonna upload the actual video from the brand creation blueprint course that actually walks through how to set up your website, or you can just get that free course. Um, on second thought, I don't think I will upload that because I want people to actually go into the course because there's a whole bunch of other um, great stuff around just getting your website set up. So definitely check out Brand Creation Blueprint to get your website built. Um, Stephanie says thank you. Mila says thanks. Oh, you're very welcome. Glad this was helpful for everyone. All right. I guess I'll give a sneak peek then at tomorrow's training. So tomorrow should be a really exciting training because we're going to talk about how to actually create a passive never ending supply of traffic. And so traffic is just the people that come to your website. So definitely come back for uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m. because I'm going to be talking about how you get people to your website and get actually people seeing your content and starting to actually grow an audience for your brand. So that sounds exciting. Definitely come back tomorrow. Myra says, yes, it's a great course. Emily says, yes, do the course. All right. Awesome. So the course works. I also recently just updated it. Um, trying to remember, was it was it Emily that you, you got into it and it was kind of outdated? Um, Thank you. I just updated it um, last week. I hope that's the right link. I was going to look in. So actually, no, that's the wrong link. It's it's actually polaram.com slash hosting. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got it up there. All right. All right. So yeah, so that's how you can get Bluehost. And um, this should all be in uh, the Brand Creation Blueprint course as well. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for attending and thank you for all your amazing comments and participating. And uh, remember to do the challenge task for today, which is creating your value proposition and then sharing it um, in the group. And I'll be creating that post right now, um, right after I end this stream. So thanks for attending and I will see you tomorrow. Yes, we'll be back with more. Mm-hmm. It's going to be great. All right. Bye. Bye.